Greetings and welcome once again to LegalizeFreedom.com. I'm your host, Greg Moffat, and my guest today is Richard Grove of TragedyAndHope.com. Our discussion centers on compulsory public education, and specifically the work of author and former New York School Teacher of the Year, John Taylor Gatto, and the 2012 film, The Ultimate History Lesson. Uh, John Taylor Gatto is the author of Weapons of Mass Instruction, which focuses on mechanisms of traditional education which cripple imagination, discourage critical thinking, and create a false view of learning as a byproduct of rote memorization drills. His earlier book, Dumbing Us Down, introduced the now famous expression of the title into the common vernacular. This book adds another chilling metaphor to the brief against conventional schooling. Gatto demonstrates that the harm school inflicts is rational and deliberate. The real function of pedagogy, he argues, is to render the common population manageable. To that end, young people must be conditioned to rely upon experts, to remain divided from natural alliances and to accept disconnections from their own lived experiences. They must at all costs be discouraged from developing self-reliance and independence. Escaping this trap requires a strategy Gatto calls open source learning, which imposes no artificial divisions between learning and life. Through this alternative approach, our children can avoid being indoctrinated. Only then can they achieve self-knowledge, good judgment and courage. Hello and welcome, Richard Grove, and thank you very much for joining us today on LegalizeFreedom.com. I'm pleased to be here, Greg. Uh, I'm a fan of LegalizeFreedom.com and I'm a fan of legalizing freedom in general. (laughs) Good man. Now, today we're going to talk about the compulsory state education system uh, and there are a, a version of which exists in virtually you know, every country in the world. And we're going to talk about this in conjunction with the work of John Taylor Gatto, who was a former New York City school teacher, award winning uh, school teacher and author of various books, including uh, Dumbing Us Down, The Hidden Curriculum of Compulsory Schooling and also the more recent Weapons of Mass Instruction. Now, you and your uh, colleagues over at TragedyAndHope.com, you worked with John Taylor Gatto on uh, a documentary entitled The Ultimate History Lesson, which was a five plus hour journey examining the history, root causes and consequences of public schooling. And uh, before we dive into John Taylor Gatto's work and its implications, perhaps you should just tell us all um, what you guys do over at uh, TragedyAndHope.com and how you discovered John Taylor Gatto and how you came to work on the documentary. Well, in my search for uh, truth amidst the reality, uh, you come across a lot of different things on the Internet, a lot of different ideas, and you're you're not sure how to weigh out these ideas. And I think that was one indication to me, uh, seeing so many people struggle with uh, discerning that which exists from that which does not exist, uh, truth from illusion, if you will. And seeing so many people struggle, I thought, wow, there's a a problem with the education system in in this country. And then... I learned enough to know that I, too, was a victim of the public education system. And we're taught in a compulsory school manner to, quote unquote, know things without ever having asked the questions, the substantial questions and finding the relevant answers. Instead, we're presented with what our, you know, uh, our belief system says these, these are facts. But when you look into how these facts are amalgamated in these textbooks and the fact that the teachers a lot of times don't know the story for themselves so they don't know the difference between the fact and fiction and thus uh, a lot of fiction gets taken through the 15,000 hours of public schooling as fact and it was not my first encounter with John Taylor Gatto I had heard a lot about him I had checked out some of his videos I had uh, gotten one of his books I read through the underground history of American education I think back in maybe 2006 it would take me a couple more years of study before I could really start to identify the relevance and the, the gravamen. I mean, the, the things that are described in that book are they're so far beyond our belief system that it took me a while to, to grasp these ideas. But once I had done my own survey outside of those books and came back to those books uh, by John Taylor Gatto, like dumbing us down, it was as clear as day. In fact, you know, here's a guy who was 20 or 30 years ahead of his time. Um, and, he, and what he was discovering should have never been there to discover. So what we're looking at is the history of 20th century compulsory education. When we look into that history, it shows you uh, the foundations that were created by the robber barons and all these other corporate entities like the Ford Foundation, Rockefeller Foundation, Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. 
these are all the big foundations that helped to shape and did not not just help to shape. They mandated the policy, which w- became known as compulsory schooling, all the way up through today. It's being changed such that I don't want to call it brainwashing or mind control. But what what are those things? They are the changes in the beliefs, attitudes, emotions, reactions of the student population, which then grows into the voting adult population. They're being filled with a bunch of nonsense and so in discovering you know, my own faults and my own blind spots, uh, I started to really get the brilliance of John Taylor Gatto's work. And it was probably a year and a half process of uh, I wrote letters a couple times. He was out of the country, this sort of thing. And then a friend of mine, Jan Irvin of the Gnostic Media Podcast, had interviewed John. And so I didn't want to just do a podcast interview. So I approached him one last time uh, last June of 2011. Maybe it was the end of May. And uh, he called me on the phone and said, yeah, he'd like to fly out here and, and do the, the video interview that I offered. Because what I noticed was on the Internet, um, all the videos on YouTube seem to be poor video quality, especially poor audio quality. And it's hard to hear him clearly. And so I wanted to put something together that memorializes his body of work because it's so important not only to people now, but to people in the future. And what he describes it as is his birthright. So what we ended up doing was a you know a five hour interview over two days, which comes out to four DVDs or one Blu-ray, and it really helps people who want to take the time you know maybe one day you know a week one hour a day uh, to go through this information and to internalize it, start to integrate it into their lifestyle, because it's the things that have been changed in our lifestyle, it's the habits that have been changed, it's our it's our ways of thinking, and what we feel is wealth and what we feel is valuable has been changed over the 20th century purposely to socialize us, to make us uh, unwittingly participant in a collectivist movement to uh, to dissolve national boundaries and to create globalism is their plan. That's what the documents say. Yeah, I mean, a lot of adults um, these days will perhaps look back at their, their school days with some fondness. And But if you put it to them, well, you know, what did you really learn there that you used after school? They may admit that, okay, so it's not all it's cracked up to be and, you know, Maybe they were bullied and maybe they didn't enjoy sports, whatever. But if you put it to them that, uh, well, let me tell you what really happened. And that's that you were taught to jump through hoops. You were taught to be reflexively obedient to authority. You were taught to accept controlled uh, and narrow view of reality. Uh, You learned to manage your expectations about yourself and your future and what you could achieve. Uh, You learned to see standing out from the crowd as basically negative and ultimately, you learn not to think for yourself. I think a lot of people would say, no, 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 I don't recognize school as that. And yet, uh, as John Taylor... That's exactly Gatt- what it is. Yeah, And, and he- you must be reading out of Dumbing Us Down yeah. uh, from 1992 that John wrote. Because when I read that, I was like, wow, this guy has nailed it. And unfortunately, or fortunately, you know, everyone comes upon this information at a time when you can understand it. Because if not, it just it's noise and you won't remember the guy's name and you won't remember the book. And I encountered his books right when I was at the beginning of, you know, being able to see it's valuable, but I don't yet understand what he's saying. Then I went out and collected a bunch of other pieces of the puzzle, you know, on my own. And then I was able to say, wow, you know, and then I looked into what he, you know, he provides a lot of references and, you know, the primary sources. And he really, he exemplifies uh, what is proper, what is proper, you know, in, in the terms of etiquette and communicating this stuff on paper. As a reader, you don't know if anything's true or false, but when you can dig into the source materials, when you can see the materials that John used to formulate his own perspectives, then you too can start to formulate your own perspective. So it wasn't so much about seeing that this guy was right. It was that I had already encountered all these different puzzle pieces and I was trying to make sense out of them. And then you come across these books and it's like, hey, somebody has been here before. Somebody has left you a credible map that you can use to help you know, guide yourself through each and every day. And it starts with recognizing, yes, uh, all those things you named. The obedience to authority was the next thing out of my mouth, uh, you know, as soon as you were done talking. But then you started reading that list and I was like, (laughs) there it is. There it is. Stanley Milgram, Skinner, all these different ideas are used to control us. And that's an essential part of schooling. It's, um, It's a testing terrarium. It's an artificially created environment to bring out certain behaviors and to suppress other behaviors, especially behaviors that are freedom-based, self-reliance-based, uh, not up to listening to an authority who's being irrational. These type of things that are natural in children must be broken 
And the philosophy and the, the documents from the psychology on this over the last 150 years are remarkable. How open they can be when stating, you know, that they want to ruin children, and that's their that's their way of gaining control over this country. Yeah, well, I was just coming on to that actually because in the in the prologue in uh, Weapons of Mass Instruction, uh, John Taylor Gatto asks the question, "Do we really need school?" And of course, even in the middle of the 20th century, parents and adults were being saying, "Well, yes, of course we do. You know, hire our children to learn." Even somewhere like the U.S., with a, you know something of a culture of homeschooling. But if you read his material, um, it becomes very obvious that not only is forced schooling, because that's what it is, relatively recent, but it's, it's got rather sinister origins. It has such sinister origins that before I even address the origins, I want to address uh, maybe the root cause that leads to some of the, the problems being solved. And I want to provide the hope before I tell you about the tragedy. Uh, the resolution to some of these arguments that you know there is a non-elected ruling class or that they see men as machines, that they see human beings as, uh, you know, cogs and wheels and things that they can, you know, manipulate in order to control. And so the resolution that I found for that is, uh, you know, you could feel very powerless when you realize that these things are going on. But then you just realize that that is the default position. That is the autopilot. That is the cruise control. When we as individuals fail to assert our rights, fail to assert our self-reliance and fail to assert our will and by making choices, making informed choices, we are leaving it up to the non-elected rulers to have more power, to do as they wish without you know, any sort of resistance. And so instead of looking at it as these people are really powerful, they're in control of the world, and I don't even think it's people, I think it's a corrupt philosophy that people adopt that is controlling all the behavior of these people. Uh, you can see it as, yes, that is the world without my participation in it. That is the world without, you know, communicating to your family and friends what's really going on in a credible way. And that's what I found powerful about John's work was that it was so credible. It wasn't, you know, here's a conspiracy theory about King John and the barons, you know, daughters of the barons of Runnymede. He used that as his own. In fact, he uses that term for his coming to an awareness of these things that they don't teach us in public school. And he doubted that such a group could have a continuity uh, over 500 years and that, you know, when you look at it as a human being and an individual, you might live, you know, upwards of 80, 90 years if you're lucky. But these other groups that are multi-generational, that are organized beyond the comprehension of someone living one lifetime, things like the Vatican that has a library that goes back who knows how long. And the fact that it's not open to everyday people, it's those Places where they withhold useful information or they occult certain information, they hide it from the public. That is how the knowledge gap turns into the power gap, which turns into the wealth gap, that turns into all the problems that we experience. So before I get into the, the nasty history of in compulsory schooling, I just wanted to put it out there that there are solutions and it is learning. Learning is the answer. What's the question? And we should all start thinking like that. Because the more we engage our minds in the everyday living of our lives, the more of our life, that, you know, when you look at it in hindsight, that's going to be full of our own choices and not us outsourcing our thinking to people who can barely manage their own lives. In fact, they can't because they have to live in a predatory, plundering manner off of people who produce and are hardworking. 